1986, the Council of Cultural Preservation of the State of Sao Paulo, on the FAT, listed an extensive urban area in the city of Sao Paulo, Brazil, the Jardins. This urban sector corresponds to the intersection of four subdivisions built in the Garden City concept, whereby the first was Jardim America, conceived around 1915 by the British architects Raymond Unwin and Barry Parker, responsible for the first ever garden cities in history, Latchwood, and Hampstead Garden Suburb, a subdivision in North London. The designation of the Jardins as cultural heritage was part of an initiative to valorize an urban landscape that differed from the rest of the city, undergoing a blatant process of verticalization. Precursors of the modern. Raymond, Raymond Unwin and Barry Parker first developed this type of occupation in Latchwood when they gave form to the theoretical model of Ebenezer Howard, who proposed an, an autonomous community with a controlled urban dimension set apart from the London metropolis. In addition to having the large natural and arable areas within it, the town was also to be surrounded by a, by a green belt. This alternative urban lifestyle was soon adapted into a commercial enterprise, although with similar forms and landscaping results. The same under Anway and Parker went on conceiving the project of a North London suburb, Hampstead Garden Suburb. The Garden City model throughout the world spread, including Jardim America in Sao Paulo, very soon after the experience in the UK. There were, however, precedents prior to the projects by Park and Anand. Subdivisions that sought and created a balanced relationship between the build up and landscaped areas, with the aim of creating environments with a natural atmosphere. Landscapes created with pathways of organic lines abundantly wooded, such as Central Park in New York in the Chicago suburb of Riverside in 1869, both conceived by Frederick Law Olmsted and his partner, Calvert Ball. Riverside was located far from the central core of Chicago, as did Hampstead Garden Suburb in London in 1986 and Judging America in Sao Paulo in 1915. These three suburbs, are situated in metropolis that have grown since the developments were implemented. However, despite the similarity with their origins today, these created landscapes are different, which seem to have resulted from different strategies for the management of guidelines that shaped, shaped them and the degree to which they were maintained as such. Jardim America, Oranges and Transformations. Jardim America was implemented by the City Improvements, a land company which associated capitalists, technicians, and local and European investors. Around 1915, the company hired Raymond Dunwey and Barry Parker to adapt to the Jardim America project to the new British trends. This initiative culminated in the arrival of Barry Park in Sao Paulo in 1917. For two years, the urbanist based himself in Sao Paulo, visiting the land owned by the company, redesigning plans, conceiving new projects, and drawing up guidelines and norms for developing the areas to be subdivided. These activities were carried out in close contact with local technicians and administrators, and with employees who remained after his departure, thus ensuring that, this, that his ideas would be, would be developed. A substantial part of this legacy was expressed through strict control, control over the design and implementation of new buildings guaranteed by rules embedded in contractual clauses recorded in the deeds of each property. These provisions 
were conferred by the city prior to this construction authorizations on plots of land acquired by the owners through funding by the company itself. The verification and authorization of the projects was conducted independently and prior to, the, to that exercised by the legal instance of the municipality of Sao Paulo. These procedures were responsible for creating an identification mark on the landscape and imagery of Sao Paulo. The neighborhoods designed under this system formed an extensive area in the south southwestern axis of Sao Paulo, known as the city neighborhoods. This situation lasted for more than 50 years, guaranteeing the permanence and differentiation of the landscape in relation to the rest of the city, which was transformed with other parameters since the image of Sao Paulo that became enshrined in the mid 50s was one of progress and verticalization. The dilution of the model. The city of Sao Paulo grew alternating constructions and verticalized nuclei on areas of land aligned with roads laid until led out in the hypodemic plan. The process of replacing demolished constructions with tall buildings intensified. The pressure for densification surrounded the garden neighborhoods and reached its borders and even its interior with the introduction of new uses. The permission for controlled uses alternatives to the residential for the existing constructions of these streets was the beginning of a series of flexibilities within the rigid normative framework that Barry Parker had outlined for the occupation of Jardim America in 1917. This situation coincides with another important alteration during the same decade. The city transferred to the municipality the exclusive attribution of approving new projects and controlling renovations in existing, existing houses. The company's detachment from the process that had guaranteed the city landscape was soon felt. From the alteration of use, it soon moved on to provisions relating the, to the implantation coefficients and use and the height of new constructions in different parts of the city. This occurred because, paradoxically, the landscape created economically added value to these regions. The pressure, therefore, was for mechan mechanisms that would enable the expansion of gains with the same subdivisions, in other words, through substitutions and even verticalizations. The tension between the pressure for change and the permanence of the landscape of residents and gardens culminated in conflict of permission to build a shopping mall on a large vacant plot of land. This intention generated the triggering process of what ultimately consolidated itself as the listing process of the Jardins, the segment resulting from the sum of the Jardim America and contiguous subdivisions. The management of preserving the cultural heritage of Jardins. In 1986, the designation by Conde Fat of the area created by Jardim America in three contiguous subdivisions was based on an official recognition of the urban cultural fact that signified the introduction of the Garden City model into Sao Paulo, and also meant that part of the population was linked to that kind of landscape. However, this recognition was only part of what was intended with this official act of preservation. The listing by Condefat, as very often in its activities, also attempted to respond to the clamor by part of the population for the unaltered maintenance of the feature of the sub this urban segment. It also functioned as a strategy that sought to interrupt 
the progressive pace of transformations that had been taking place on an increasing scale on this landscape. Until that moment, the Institute of Preservation in Brazil had been used mainly to valorize isolated buildings. At times, this could also be a small sector of an urban center linked to historical processes. Often, as in the case of Jardins, the aim was also to abort as excessive transformations and demolitions. However, no cultural history preservation had yet been carried out in such a dynamic metropolis in a, an area of such dimensions intersected by major roads for urban circulation and with such an impetus for transformations. What historically characterized the landscape of Garden City type urbanization, as previously mentioned, was the planned relationship between build-up areas and green areas, and the relationship established between full and empty spaces based on setback goals, the lack of the physically explicit demarcation of plot boundaries, and even the type of the houses built. Hence, as previously stated, the previous experience of controlling such a degree of changes had been non-existent at Condefat. The attempt to protect the landscape was limitedly expressed through prescriptions relating to the design of streets, the demarcation of subdivisions and vegetation. Nothing had, city, nothing had been established regarding individual safety. There was also no attempt to limit the construction of masonry front walls as envisaged at the origin of the garden districts, including Jardim Amel. The task of controlling what was prescribed in the preservation of the Jardins from then on was the responsibility of the state and municipal preservation bodies. The legally expressed attempts at regulation, however, were imprecise and insufficient and little by little were being made more flexible. At the present moment, Condefat, subjugated by strong pressure from real estate capital, is in the process of making the listing rules even more flexible. And the future legal text might move even farther away from the spirit of maintaining the landscape that inspired the listing in the 1980s. Anglo-North America congeners and their preservation. For the purpose of this article, we will examine the case of Riverside and Hempstead Garden suburb. The choice lies in the fact that both are situations related to the suburbs of large cities, which were implanted far from the urban centers and which still retain the essence of their original features. What have been the initiatives for preserving their landscapes? How do they differ from the case in Sao Paulo, Chatting America? In Riverside, originally located in an area of little value, a varied protection network has now been established. Different municipal governments departments monitor compliance with the guidelines, as well as the Historic Preservation Commission, which seeks to ensure that structure or building transformations are carried out in the spirit of the initial project. There is an abundance of material regarding this place related not only to its characterization as a national landmark, but also to information and guidelines on the provisions for maintaining the characteristics. This is also the spirit behind the online material produced by the Hempstead Guard Suburban Trust. Organizing a question and answer system, it approaches to the day-to-day -day difficulties of potential owners who intend to renovate or update their buildings for current needs. This involves addressing specifications related to land occupation modes, architecture, facades, 
recovery of building materials and original details. The, sa the same type of feedback is also passed to cities in the guarded city of Latchworld. All these precautions seem to have ensured that the, the external appearance of the buildings and the picturesque, picturesque landscape that characterize Riverside and Hempstead Garden suburb have been maintained since its origin more than a hundred years ago. The ratio of landscape and built areas, the absence of masonry walls, and the typology of residence still remains. The, this has not been the case of the Caseco in Sao Paulo, in which it is rare to observe segments that have maintained land, the landscape characteristics close to the origin. Even in relation to the listing in 1986, what actually remains is an abundance of trees and the layout of the streets, which essentially were the only aspects that were well demarcated in the listed provisions. Although in Latin America today, a series of roads initially planned for local use serve as an escape route from the dense traffic on the main street, which in turn are important communication routes across the city. Conclusion. A number of aspects lead to a differentiation of the degrees of preservation between the Sao Paulo and the Anglo-North American exceptions. In Chicago and London, metropolitan traffic does not depend, as in Sao Paulo, on roads inside the Garden City subdivisions. Another factor that seems to determine, determine the high degree of preservation in Anglo-American examples is the fact that there are a number of institutions representing government, historic preservation, and residents acting in solidarity. This seek to ensure that they are maintaining true communication material with the public involved in actions that could mischaracterize them. In the case of Sao Paulo, there is no sufficient structure support material to add interventions, nor sufficient emphatic texts to explain the collective value of the place. Another fundamental aspect is the fact that in the British and North American examples, the land valuation involves maintaining the landscape as a whole, including original construction land valuations. Maintaining the appearance of each house was something that the American, Jardim America listing did not venture to do. Nor the owners of the house have the perception that there would, could be economic and cultural value in the maintenance of the landscape as a whole. Hence, the consequences of the limits of this preservation are evident. These considerations demonstrate the complexity of what was intended in the assurance of the 1986 listing. It is a fact that the act interrupted the total destruction of the Garden City landscape. It is also a fact that the listing alone, without the concurrence of other forces, has been unable to guarantee the intended preservation. Thank you very much.